Well, here we have it, the Gullwing, the AMG. No one knows what AMG stands for, by the way. Yeah, it's like AMF in the old days. What did that mean? Yeah, I was laughing when I was driving this car around Fontana. Like, what if you had a bad phone connection and someone was saying, I'm going to give you my AMC, and you thought they said AMG? How pumped you'd be and then how disappointed you'd be when they saw that Matador? Yeah, the Matador shows the driveway. up in green, lime green. Um, this car is, uh, let's see if I can remember a few things. First off, it's a twelve or $13,000 paint job option that's on this car. It's called uh, Aulu something. Mercedes Silver. Yeah, and uh, well, don't touch it. It has well, wait a minute. This actual, is, uh... it has nanoparticles of aluminum in it. So it actually sort of looks like liquid metal. That was the plan. And again, if you want to see all this, go to adamcarolla.com and uh, go to the car cast and you can see what we're talking about. Now, um, other things about this car that are uh, interesting, I'm uh, told from Matt of Motorator, uh, they had to design it so that they could get the gold wings open so that they would clear those boxes they stack all the cars in in Japan because they're so tight for space over there. So probably, they have to go over there. Yeah, probably way more important is all the shitty parking places we have in the mini malls here with right. compact only. Right. The other thing, which uh, Sandy's going to test out later when he does a uh, road test of this car, is evidently explosive hinge pins so that if and when the car flips over and is still for 10 seconds, the goal wing doors will blow off because if you think about it. How the if, hell are you getting out of this thing upside down? How are you getting out of it not upside that, down? Not that it'll be intentional sunny side down, but you right. know, it's good to know that I can get out of a, a wrecked uh, $220,000 car. Yeah, um, I like the proportions of the car. Um, I saw the new Top Gear and they were explaining that they didn't like the rear end. And I think the rear end is a little stubby and probably if you were looking for a place to improve the car aesthetically, I'd say the rear end, I'd say it goes, this yeah, car from the goal. it looks short, but it's not. That's the thing. Here's my thing. I'm, the, I'm not a convertible guy, but this car will look dynamite when they flatten the top and lose the gull wings. And gull wings for me are kind of the heritage of the car, but still the look of it, it's a gorgeous car. It just needs a little bit more flatter back. Overall, yeah, it's a, it's a nine and a half from the goal wing forward or from the from the rear tire forward and then from that back it gets it turns into a six with still an overall high score yeah. fit and finish amazing Tremendous. of course it's a mercedes and uh i still couldn't figure out it has a, an articulating uh, rear wing here and uh, listen if you didn't see it go up you weren't driving fast enough clearly. Uh, it was going up i wasn't looking in the rear view when i was driving it but the one thing I must say about these rear wings that go up at 75 miles an hour, it's basically telling the highway patrol, hey, I'm at, hey everybody, I'm at 75 plus. Like, that's all you need to know. As a matter of fact, they don't need the radar detector. They just get a picture of, of the, the wing, wing up, up and then a picture of the owner's manual well, and you're busted. They had that problem, I think, in the, was it the Boxsters when they came out with them? Because they all, they all popped at, I think, 65 or above or something like that. Yeah. So I think they made a switch so you could either have them up or have them down or something like that. But right. um, let's say if you can afford this car, you can afford the ticket. All right, well, let's open the gold wing door. And uh, I had no difficulty closing the door or reaching the door from the sitting position. I did, however, even though I climbed out of the cars at the car at Fontana at least eight or 10 times, each time I pulled the lever from inside, I still threw my like shoulder a, into it like, like, a it was, like, door. like a regular door. I could not get used to the gull wing layout I think of the, the thing. There is one thing that I'll tell you when you we're done, the one thing that as nice as a car this is, I couldn't believe that they did on it, but you'll see it, and when we look at the door, and you'll go, oh. I'm well, let, let's pop the hood first and look at the motor. Nice long sheet of yeah. uh, very expensive uh, aluminum. Hood comes up, and you can see just how far back the engine is set. Love the uh, AMG. L love, love the uh, plenum on that, uh, that car, and just love... I just love the way it's set back and the shape of it and so on and so forth. I do feel, and I don't know if you're with me on this one, Gans, but I feel, and I know it's all about money, 
but you know we have the we have you know two air boxes that feed the V8, the very thirsty V8. I, I would like to see this made out of something a little bit nicer the, with like a wrinkle finish well, or something on I was gonna say like the it. Ferrari guys, they'll throw a nice emblem on there, do a wrinkle finish to hide the bad machine. I, I, I know, like I, I know they're all business and I know it's all about bucks and Wait. I know everything adds up, but like when you're talking about a car and it's a $200,000 plus car, I think much like you, you made reference, hey, if you can afford this, you can afford a ticket. Yeah. I would say if you made, and you did what essentially Ferrari does, you'd take this thing, cast you'd it. cast it out of aluminum, you'd put a little finish on it, an M, uh, AMG badge on it or something like that, you would add $1,000 to the price yeah. of the car. Uh, so instead of $218,000, it'd be $219,000. Although you could probably do this for another five, 700 bucks from the factory. Yeah. But either way, when you pop the hood, you it, wouldn't be looking at like a bunch this of plastic. Beautiful. It just, right, it, yeah. right. Uh, other than that, I have no quarrel with that. Uh, well, I, this, this is what we were talking about earlier. Look how much, you know, there's an oil sump here, I think for a dry sump system. But if you look how much room there is, you know, the front of the engine really is right about there. You got no, we got V12 potential here. We absolutely do. And again, uh, we are mid-engine because we're behind the, I was trying to think about how to change the spark plugs. I now don't even know if it has spark plugs. Well, they're, they're all at the top with the coil on plugs, but you know, I, this car is like, would you it's, have to change them? You probably, by the time you were ready to change the plugs, it was time for you to get your old lady a new car, you know? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, a car like this, if you think about it, the spark plugs are going to need to be changed in 100,000 miles. You're going to drive this car 6,000 miles a year. Uh, you'll be done with that. You'll be on your third wife by, by the time you need yeah. to change a plug. Yeah, there's no, there's no point in it anymore. Just glue this whole thing shut. The brakes are uh, two-piece with the uh, floating hat, the slotted and cross-drilled. I know uh, the cross-drilling doesn't do that much, but it looks cool, <laughs> and I, I like brakes, it. Brakes, uh, this is just such a well-set-up car, and I haven't driven a lot of the fancy well set up cars, mm -hmm. but getting in this and doing, like I said, the zero to hundred to zero and not picking that number. That's just when I started getting, you know, kind of getting to the point where I go, yeah, I should hit the brakes. And I just leaned on it and just, it just, it just basically threw me into the harness hard and straight as an arrow. Just, it was nice getting in a car where I didn't have to do, okay, you're braking and then, right. yeah, all right, hold it, hold it straight, man. There is a carbon ceramic brake upgrade, upgrade for, uh, you know, if you got an extra, I don't know, 14 K lying around um, a, little, uh, a little short on that one and also uh 19s in front 20s in rear so again if you're trying to save some money and rotate the tires done yeah but <laughs> the, the, i don't think there's anything about this car that you would say yeah i'm gonna skimp a little bit and get the uh yeah i'll get the uh, all season tires instead of the uh you know, the sticky wide ones that, that are well, on Well, the, 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 another thing that I've talked to my uh, good friends over at Brembo about, as cool as something like uh, carbon ceramic brakes and all that, it's more of a conversation piece because the reality, as the guy from Brembo told me, even, even with the, the, the big brake upgrades, it, it's not so much about stopping distance weight. or power or it's a little about weight, it's mostly about heat, cycling, and doing 24 hours of Le Mans. So, meaning, if you're gonna have this car in an endurance race, and you're gonna be working the shit out of those brakes, and you're gonna get carbon them glowing fiber. right out, then you want the carbon fiber. But for just around town, it's not gonna make a difference. As a matter of fact, I would, I would venture to say that the $14,000 brake upgrade isn't going to do anything to your stopping distance unless you did that competition 50 times, 50 times in a row. I think I, when we had uh, uh, the fellow Dino uh, Crescentini from uh, Stop Tech, I think he was kind of saying much of the same thing. It's, it's a nice thing to have. It's tough to make work on the street and they do it, but yeah. It's more for endurance for race. Those guys with the GT3s that want to have uh, you know, I want to say they have that. Carbon fiber, baby, right there. These look good and again, uh, the Big mammoth. Big, big, I'm guessing six piston in, in front, maybe four in the rear. I wouldn't mind seeing a two-piece rotor and uh, hat in the, the, rear, in the rear, which I'm not seeing, especially the way this car is set up, the way the spokes are set up on this car and the rim is set up, it's so visible. 
that uh, again, yeah. it just becomes an aesthetic thing at a certain point. I'm sure this works just the same. We're great the but, other day. Uh, I'd still like to see, uh, kind of like to see a two-piecer there. All right, uh, we've seen the engine, we've seen the gull wings, we've seen the rims. Let's, uh, should we take a look at the interior of the car? The exhaust yeah. note is very nice, and the exhaust pipes are very nice, blended in very nicely into the rear fascia. Uh, when, uh, when Matt picked, uh, picked me up and we went and grabbed lunch to, to, to just mildly tool around uh, Culver City, mm -hmm. I couldn't believe how throaty the pipes that they set up on us. It wasn't like the like a standard, like, yeah, we got, you know, AMG right. with something. It's healthy. And well, should we should we fire it up? Should we take, yeah, a, jump take in. a listen? I'll get behind. So get Always bang my feet together before I get into a nice car. You, Ace. It's respect. It's just respect. Cars in park, key is I don't know where. Just don't put it in reverse. Yeah, like, you know, a loud exhaust. Loud exhaust. Yeah, you know? well, it's got a nice, uh, nice sound to it. The, uh, the interior's uh, no frills, but uh, everything Spartan. you'd need and elegant. And uh, I like the uh, always, always like the stitching. The leather's beautiful. The seats are firm but fair. All right, you can get my ding. You ready for it? Mm. Got two hundred and some odd thousand dollar car. Oh, you want some more gauges? No, not at all. You I, know? I, I, I this Why don't car. You want more gauges? <laughs> I like this car because it's Spartan and it's kind of. German utilitarian, uh -huh. and that's why I can go with it because it is a German car. If this is an Italian car, I'd smack it for not having this flash right. interior. But I love that aspect so, of it. You know what I don't like? Hmm. You're gonna get it. Take a look at the corner of that door. Oh, I was staring. By the way, I was staring I, at the locks. Uh, you you're talking about the? Yeah. Yeah, I, I was staring at, a, at on this door, thinking this looks like cheap plastic. While I was while we were talking. That's the only. I, and for me to find. Just that about the, the fit and finish. Yeah. They got off easy, but I, I can't believe they didn't do at least something on the, the latch. It's I'm sure weird. There's a it's reach. not silver or anything. It's this weird, just plain We're going to help Mercedes out with uh, that's uh, for the 2012 model upgrade. Then you're done. No, don't give it to them. Let's start our own aftermarket company. We'll, get a, we'll buy an $80,000 CNC mill. Right. Lave something, start trying uh -huh. these out. Uh huh. I can hear the conversation with the wife right now. Listen. They're going to sell 500 of these things. If half the people that buy one buy me and Sandy's door lock popper uppers, we're go oh, wait a minute. It's going to be like this, too. I know a guy that can get these for us. Yeah. And it's not going to be easy, but they, they got it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, everything's nice about the interior except for the door lock lock popper upper yeah the I, dog penis it, the funny I, thing is it's just it's you look at the car and it's the only thing that really doesn't I, it's look funny bad. i swear to god while we were talking about the car i was staring at it going that thing looks like a cheap piece of plastic well listen a can it's of mercedes plastic a can of silver krylon will fix that in the interim yes yeah we can take care of that here all right and, uh, and again work. beautiful car all right so uh, gans you're going to put some cameras in this thing yeah we're going to stick it up we're going to we're going to drive it mildly through the streets of glendale and probably uh i don't know we might try a new segment here called the uh, car cast uh, test drive through all right oh drive through i like it pick me up uh bean burrito buddy Bean burrito got it all right go got to it. town <laughs>